as we begin the message, I'd just like to open with a prayer, and then we're going to talk this morning a little bit more about spiritual gifts. So let's pray together. Lord, we do thank you that you are the source of our rest and of our life and of everything that is good. Thank you for this worship team that has led us so well into uh, worship this morning. And we pray that we will continue to focus our minds and hearts on you and that you will speak uh, your word this morning. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So last month, Carrie preached a message on spiritual gifts, and this message this morning is a kind of a continuation and expansion of that message. She gave us a good foundation, and today we're going to talk more specifically about what the gifts are and how we are each called to use them in our lives. Two weeks ago, uh, John was preaching on a florist, and when he was preaching, I was struck by how God arranges our life as a church. And this includes how he's placed certain gifts in our midst. And I like the image of the floral arrangement, each part in its place, bringing about a beautiful whole. And so that's why I've chosen the images that I have this morning. Now this week in our country, we've experienced some very tense and painful moments that have highlighted the brokenness in our world. And in the midst of that, we've also experienced moments that show how God is present and bringing love and hope even to those places where there is violence and, and hatred. We live in the reality of violence and darkness being part of our world and a part of our life. At the same time, that God's goodness, love, and hope are present as well. We always live in the reality and the tension of those two things, but perhaps this week that's been highlighted for us more than, than usual uh, through the events that happened in Ottawa and Montreal this week. So all that I'm going to talk about this morning is, we're not going to talk specifically about that again until we come to communion, but all that I talk about this morning, I want you to hear in the context of a world that is broken and needs God's redemption and hope. David Fleming um, is a Jesuit priest, and he writes about um, service. He writes about it as an ever-continuing flow from beginning to end and back to the beginning in this way. Jesus, he is the center of our lives, the one who leads, the one who calls us to serve others. Vision, we try to grasp the big picture, the reign of God breaking into our world. Exercising, we do things, not for others, but with them. We do them with Jesus. Reflecting, we observe where God is at work and where he is absent. Valuing, we clarify the values present in a situation and ask Jesus to shape them. Choosing, we reflect on the possible courses of action and choose what seems better. Discerning, we listen to the language of our hearts. More, we strive to do the better thing out of love for God. Laboring, we collaborate with Christ in the work of redeeming and healing the world and thanking, all is a gift. Thanksgiving permeates our lives. 
Now, he was talking specifically about the Ignatian way of life, but I believe that this is the way that all Christians should live. Centering ourselves in Jesus, looking for God in the world, and cooperating with him in his work of healing and redeeming in the unique ways that he is calling each one of us. And doing all of this in the awareness of the great gift of God's presence with us and his love for us and for the world. And again, all of this is the context that we want to look at specific spiritual gifts um, in today. There are three main texts in the New Testament that talk about spiritual gifts, and they are in Romans 12, 1 Corinthians 12, and Ephesians 4. But the first thing that I want to note about every one of these passages before we actually read portions of them is that uh, each one of the passages that specifically talks about gifts is surrounded by uh, verses that talk about using them in love and for the purpose of building one another up and bringing God's kingdom into the world. I think that uh, since each of the passages have that context, um, it's important to highlight it because it seems clear that uh, we need to be reminded of that fact, that our gifts are to be used not for our own ends, but so that others uh, can be helped through our gifts. Gifts are given for the common good and are to be used in love and for the purpose of bringing love into the world. Now, the verses in Ephesians chapter 4, they actually follow one of my favorite prayers in all of the Bible. And I won't read the prayer, but basically, uh, to summarize it, the prayer is that we would be able to grasp God's love for us more fully. And then in Ephesians, Ephesians 4, Paul starts to talk about the gifts. And in verses 13, 11 to 13, he says, So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and teachers to equip his people for works of service, so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Now, 1 Corinthians 12 is followed by one of the best-known passages in all of Scripture, often referred to as the love chapter and frequently read at wedding services. Uh, it's a long passage, and Carrie focused quite a bit on that last month, so I'm just going to read a few verses uh, that are dispersed throughout chapters 12 and 13. Now, to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. Now eagerly desire the greater gifts, and yet I will show you the most excellent way. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast, it is not proud. Love never fails, but the greatest of these is love. And then Romans chapter 12, verses 3 to 9 say, For by the grace given me, I say to each one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in according with your faith, in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. Love must be sincere. 
Hate what is evil, cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Here is a list of gifts that are named in the, new, in the Bible, um, mostly from the chapters that I've um, just read portions of, and a few taken from a couple passages in the Old Testament and a couple of other passages in the New Testament as well. Um, the list has been taken from this book. Uh, its network is a course on spiritual gifts. And it's a pretty complete list of all of the gifts mentioned in Scripture. But this doesn't mean that it is a totally complete list. There are probably gifts that are at work, even among our community, that might not be listed in Scripture. But it's a good starting point anyway. There's quite a few there. I'm just going to read through them uh, fairly quickly, and then I'm going to lead this slide up as I talk a little bit more, not necessarily about each gift, but about how we come to discover our own gifts. So administration, craftsmanship, creative communication, encouragement, faith, giving, helps, hospitality, intercession, leadership, mercy, apostleship, prophecy, evangelism, shepherding, teaching, discernment, knowledge, and wisdom, healing, speaking in tongues and the interpretation of tongues, and miracles. Now, many of us, I may even have you um, raise your hands if you've done so, um, have probably filled out spiritual gifts inventories. This is a sample of one taken from Network where we answer a bunch of questions about um, our experiences or what we're drawn to do to figure out what our gifts are and maybe even to encourage us to find a particular place to serve in the church. And I just, just out of curiosity, I'd just like to see how many of you have done something like that in the past. Okay, a few. Uh, lots of you haven't. They can be helpful. Um, I remember actually taking the network course quite a few years ago here at New Hope Church. And uh, again, they can be helpful and we can certainly use them. But I've come to appreciate over the years that filling in a test isn't enough. That's not really, it doesn't really give us the full picture. And I would encourage each of us to discover what our gifts are, if we don't know them already, by listening. Listening to God listening to our own interior um, sense of what we're drawn to, what we love, what brings us joy, listening to our community. And that community may include this church, it may include other um, people in your life that have known you for, um, known you well and known you for a few, a, a little while. Um, I found that over the years at New Hope, one of the ways that we found people to serve at New Hope um, is actually to pray, to pray that God would bring to mind the right person. And it's amazing how simple and yet effective that strategy is. As you all know, that doesn't mean that we don't ask in a general way when we need volunteers. And it doesn't mean that some people are serving in places that maybe isn't their passion or gift, that isn't a place that brings them joy. Sometimes there are things that just need to get done. But the ideal would be for everyone in this church to be doing exactly what they felt God was inviting them to do, no more and no less. I know we're not there yet, but that is honestly our desire here at New Hope Church. I can name several people in this community who are serving in places that um, fit their gifts and their passion. And that's obvious not only because they're using their gift, but because it does, it fits who they are, it brings them joy. And I'm just going to name a few. 
Some of these you may know, and some you may not, and it's not by any means exhaustive. But Christine has a gift of hospitality. Sarah has a gift of intercession, mercy, and probably discernment. Michael, who served as our treasurer for several years, has a gift of helps. Amber has, a gift, has gifts of helps and of shepherding. Zach is a teacher, not only by training, but also by gifting. Karen, who participated in the worship band this morning and is coordinating our worship uh, for us now, has a gift of creative communication and of leadership among probably many other gifts. Silas and Becky have the gift of helps, and they use it all over the place at New Hope Church. They're almost always the last ones here helping us clean up, as well as having been on a setup team probably as long as they've been at New Hope Church. Jackie, a member of our leadership team, has gifts of discernment, wisdom, and intercession, and she uses these in our leadership teams very effectively. Keith is an administrator and a craftsman, and we would literally, as well as figuratively, fall apart at New Hope if he wasn't using his gifts here. Lindy is another member of our leadership team, and she clearly has gifts of administration, leading, and I think intercession as well. There are too many people that serve at New Hope to name everyone. But we wouldn't be who we are as a church without each one doing something, being here. Now, you may feel like you have something to offer at New Hope, but are reluctant to step forward. Um, a few of us this week were at a faith formation workshop, and Keith mentioned uh, just towards the end of our time of reflecting on our community and sharing together that um, he thought there's probably people in our community that we don't know well enough to know what their gifts are, what where they want to be serving, what, what they want to be doing, and how to express those gifts. And if there's something on your heart, please talk to someone about it. Talk to myself or Brandon, to John or someone else on the leadership team. We want to be open to all the gifts that are part of this body and to prayerfully discern how we are being arranged now, that doesn't mean that every idea that's ever come up at New Hope we pursue, but just to give you a few examples of the things that have come out of people's um, sense of wanting to uh, participate and do something, our Man Scouts group, the women's Bible study that meets on Wednesday mor or Thursday mornings now, um, and Ubuntu are all things that just came out of one or two or more people saying, hey, I think we need something like this in our community, and I have a passion, I maybe have some gifts I can offer, and so if you have any ideas or anything like that on your heart, please let us know. Uh, we want to prayerfully uh, determine what God is inviting us to do and be as a community. So finding our gifts may involve filling out a gifts inventory. And if you want to do so, let me know. I have a few on hand. But it needs more than that. I can fill in a test that tells me I have a gift of teaching. But if no one that knows me has ever seen a glimpse of that in my life, I probably actually don't have a gift of teaching. And I need someone who's going to be honest with me and be able to tell me, you really sucked, actually. Or you need to grow in that. I see a glimpse, but it's, it's just beginning. So we need other people to help us discern what our gifts are. Um, we may have an idea, and we can ask the people that know us well enough to test that. 
On the other hand, we also have to listen to ourselves. Um, I may fill out a gifts inventory and it may tell me that I have a gift of administration. And maybe I actually can do some administration, but it's not life-giving for me at all. It's something I can do, but it's not really where I find life or joy. Then I have to listen to my internal sense of what brings me um, joy, what brings life, what feels like it fits, um, more than I do a piece of paper that I write something down on. Discovering our gifts and developing them is an ongoing process. It's not something we do once for all. As we grow in Christ, some of our gifts develop or change or grow. We may be called to use them in different contexts and different places in different ways. So even if we feel like, oh yeah, I know what my gifts are, we should always be uh, attending to how God, how Jesus is inviting us to, um, to use them in our life. So once we know what our gifts are, how do we use them? Our gifts are diverse, and we learn by paying attention to God's voice, to our own interior sense of what's right and good, and to our community. And this is also how we find out about how God is inviting us to use our gifts. Thomas Kelly, in the book called A Testament of Devotion, which is a beautiful book if any of you are looking for some spiritual reading, he writes, too many well-intentioned people are so preoccupied with the clatter of effort to do something for God that they don't hear him asking that he might do something through them. When we use our spiritual gifts, we should feel a, a deep sense of affirmation in our souls that this is what we're meant to be doing. This is what we're made for. We should feel that they are life-giving, not life-draining. We should feel, we should not feel that it's a clatter of effort every time we serve. That doesn't mean that it might feel like that sometimes, but if it's always like that, that's not a good sign. Fleming again writes about serving, that we always interact as members of the body of Christ. We always serve in the context of a relationship with Christ and with others. One of the great gifts we share with others is the fruit of these life-giving relationships. Ministry is a sharing of life and love. Jesus gives the gifts, the gift of divine life, and invites us to join him in giving this life to others. When we use our spiritual gifts, this is how we ought to feel, that somehow life is being nourished within ourselves, within our community of faith, within our work, within our world. Kelly also talks about uh, the, the Quaker concept of a concern. This is a little bit different than a spiritual gift. It's more like the big picture of how all of, all of who I am fits together. And that may include my education, uh, my passions, my personality, my talents, my natural talents, as well as spiritual gifts. But I want to talk about it now because Kelly talks about how when we have a concern, it's a source of discernment for all that we might commit ourselves to. The concern-oriented life is ordered and organized from within, and we learn to say no as well as yes by attending to the guidance of inner responsibility. Um, so maybe I'll just give you an example of this in my own life. Um, so I have gifts of discernment and wisdom, and one of my the ways that I use that is um, as I meet with people for spiritual direction. And I would say over the years, I have discerned that spiritual direction is my one of maybe the main concern that I have, that my um, 
who I am is fully expressed in that place, and that it is where God is asking me to focus most of my attention. So then, when other opportunities come up, I have to ask, does that fit with this main thing that my life is supposed to be about, or does it distract from that? And that is how um, we can how a concern can help us make decisions about where and how we use our gifts. There's always more opportunities than there is time and energy. And so we need to be careful to um, attend to that inner voice that tells us what is the most important thing for us to do. Uh, Kelly again talks about um, that concern. He says, a concern is God-initiated often surprising, always holy. For the life of God is breaking through into the world. Its execution is in peace and power and astounding faith and joy. For in unhurried serenity, the eternal is at work in the midst of time, triumphantly bringing all things up unto himself. And he emphasizes the integration of our life, volunteering, whether that's at New Hope or other places, being involved at church, should not be something we do out of a sense of obligation or duty that ends, that ends up actually bringing disintegration to our lives. Again, Kelly writes, religion isn't something to be added to our other duties and thus make our lives yet more complex. The life with God is the center of life, and all else is remodeled and integrated by it. It gives the singleness of I. The most important thing is not to be perpetually passing out cups of cold water to a thirsty world. We can get so fearfully busy trying to carry out the second great commandment, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, that we are underdeveloped in our devoted love to God. But we must love God as well as our neighbor. Our fellowship with God issues in world concern. We cannot keep the love of God to ourselves. It spills over. And this is how we come to discern how we are to use our gifts, not as an aside, but as out of a sense of who we are and who we are called to be. I want you to think for a moment about the life of God breaking into the world, about the love of God spilling over. And I want you to think for a moment about where you see that happening. And then I invite you to think about where do you see the need for it to happen more? The answer, the answers to those two questions might give a clue about where God is inviting you to be engaged, whether that's through prayer or action or um, attention, I don't know. But I just invite you to take those things and think a little bit more about them even as you go home today, if there was something in there for you to be with. And now I'd like to ask you to think about how you approach the use of your gifts. Um, does some of what I've described today uh, describe how you live, how you use your gifts, or not? If it doesn't, does it sound like you'd like it, you'd like it to? <laughs> um, just think about that for a moment.
our spiritual gifts when working in unison with our passions and natural talents lead us to the ways that God is inviting each one of us to let the love of God spill over. As Carrie mentioned in her message a month ago, some of us may do that very actively at New Hope Church, and some of us may do it very actively in other places. But all of our concerns are given for the purpose of restoration and recreation, of making this world that God loves and that we, in participating with Him, um, love as well, making it new, making it a place where love and justice and hope and peace are growing, are becoming more present. I'm going to read again um, the quote from Fleming that I read at the beginning of the message about the continuing the ever-continuing flow of our lives as Christians. And then I'm going to uh, just close with a prayer, and then we will move into a time of communion together. Jesus, He is the center of our lives, the one who leads, the one who calls us to serve others as some great mom is doing there at the back of the church. Vision. We try to grasp the big picture, the sign, uh, the reign of God breaking into the world. Exercising. We do things, not for others, but with them. We do them with Jesus. Reflecting. We observe where God is at work and where He is absent. Valuing, we clarify the values present in a situation and ask Jesus to shape them. Choosing, we reflect on the possible courses of action and choose what seems better, what seems more loving. We dis- discerning, we listen to the language of our hearts. More, we strive to do the better things out of love for God. And laboring, we collaborate with Christ in the work of redeeming and healing the world. We don't do it by ourselves, we do it with Christ. Thanking, all is gift. Thanksgiving permeates our lives. And back to the beginning again, Jesus, the center of our lives, the one who leads, the one who calls us to serve others. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you that in giving your gifts, you give generously. And you give to each and every one of us. And I pray that each one of us would be attentive to the ways that you are inviting us to serve you and to bring your life into the world. We pray not only for discernment, but for courage and for discipline and for your help.
Thank you that you are present here today within us and among us. Amen.